Peter King here at Falcons Camp, uh, inside at Falcons Camp today with Arthur Smith, uh, the head coach of the Falcons. So, Arthur, I'm kind of fascinated with your team because you've got so many versatile players on offense. Cordero Patterson, obviously, receiver, returner, running back. You bring back Jonu Smith, who you had in Tennessee, you know, who's not only a tight end, you played him all over the map in Tennessee. And, of course, you take B. John Robinson, right. and Steve Sarkeesian, his coach at Texas, told me he easily could have been split out as a full-time wide receiver, but we needed him to, to play running right. back. So what is it like right now having all the puzzle pieces that you have on offense? It makes it really, really fun for us as a coaching staff. Um, you know, there's a certain style we play with, and there's guys that, to your point, they can do a lot of different jobs for us. So we're not the conventional. I, I keep saying, you know, everyone wants to look at, hey, what's in the wide receiver room? What's in the running back room? What's in the tight end room? You really got to look at the skill group as a collective whole. And because there, there are guys like CP that – and it's not just like, yeah, you line them out there one play. It's like CP is a legitimate threat at receiver. And there are certain things he does really well there. And, you know, he transitioned and – can certainly be effective running the ball for us as well. But Bijan is unique. And, and talking to Steve Sarkeesian when we went down there and worked out Bijan at, at Texas and going back to his history in high school, he was a huge recruit out of Tucson. Uh, a lot of these guys are in seven on seven teams. Like you saw the skill set there. And, you know, they had some talented receivers, and hell, he won the Doak Walker at the running back. He's just a yeah. unique football player, uh, explosive like, guy that can take small you know, short passing game or whatever, and take it and hit home runs. Not only that, he can do it out of the backfield. So he's a very unique player. And uh, Drake London, you know, is another guy that's unique too. You know, his background in basketball, he, he's good in the slot, and he's pretty damn good outside. And then Kyle, Kyle's a very unique player. Kyle Pitts. Yes, yeah. Kyle Pitts. And, you know, it's just funny how the recency bias people have. He broke records as a rookie. And last year, you know, it didn't, didn't – necessarily go the way that uh, you know he wanted it or we wanted it for a couple of reasons. I mean, he, he had the, one of the best starts of camp I've ever seen. He got a little nicked up. He wasn't, you know, 100 running with a hamstring. And, then, uh, and, and you know, we all could have done a better job, and we missed him on some huge opportunities. And, um, and that's not blaming Marcus or blaming this person for a block or whatever. You know, we could have done better. And then, he, obviously, the season, he, you know, he didn't finish it. But Kyle's – Kyle's had success in this league, and um, he's a unique player as well. Another guy that can line up legitimately outside or, you know, in the in the slot or in the core. So there's a lot of very unique We pieces. haven't even mentioned the guy who got my offensive rookie of the year vote Tyler last Algier. year. Tyler Algier. I mean, comes out of nowhere, really, to be a 1,000-yard rusher in his rookie year in the NFL. And what impressed me about him – He's got a lot of old style, old time, classic running back in him where I don't know if he's going to last 15 years, but while he plays, he's going to hurt the guy on the other side of the line. Yeah, he's a, he's a great yards after contact back. Yeah. A very smart player. Um, so there's a lot of unique ways, you know, we can attack people from, from the rushing attack and, and really on the perimeter and the passing attack. And I think our own line has done a great job. I mean, I think they played really well last year. And uh, it's, it's a close-knit group. It'll be interesting to see how Matt Bergeron, you know, as he, he gets, uh, develops chemistry with those guys. Uh, you know, I, I believe, and you'd have to look this up, but somebody told me the other day, if, if Bergeron ends up starting for it, I think we'll be the youngest offense in the league as well. But wow. with, with guys that actually have NFL experience because they're so young. I mean, Kyle was 20 when we drafted him. Drake just turned 21. I mean, it's, it's a fun group to coach. So, the one guy we we haven't mentioned is Desmond Ritter. And I think America really doesn't know very much about Desmond Ritter. Obviously, he played a, a lot of football at the University of Cincinnati. And he comes in last year and down the stretch of the season after you uh, replaced uh, Marcus Mariota with him. Tell me about what you saw in him and take me through a little bit of his offseason. Yeah, with Des at Cincinnati, I mean, he he was extremely productive there. Won a lot of a lot of games, and, and was a big part of that culture change. And um, unique background, you know, coming out of high school. He wasn't one of those guys who was a quarterback early. He was a receiver. 
you know, got moved to quarterback late, uh, get some, you know, late offers. You know, I believe it was Zach Taylor and that staff had offered him at Cincinnati, and then Luke Fickle gets in there, and you know, and they they do a nice job. They turn that program, and and Des took off. He won a lot of football games, had a lot of starts, and I, and his arm strength is, is pretty damn good, and you know, for whatever reason, the way that draft fell, you know, we got him in the in the third round, and uh, he came in here and did a nice job. He was one play away all year, and really his mental development was impressive. If he had to play early, we would have adjusted. And by the time he started, we could throw everything at him. And if you really go back and look even at his first start, look at those critical downs. That's what I always say is watch the quarterbacks on critical downs, third down, fourth down, and really two-minute drive. Because these games that are one possession, that's where a lot of them are going to be won and lost. No flinch in his game. Uh, you saw it, you know, even if we kind of started slow in New Orleans and Baltimore. And as he really got into a rhythm here, those last two, uh, I thought it was pretty impressive. And in this offseason, he's taking command. Like you feel like he's taking ownership of the offense. It's you feel his presence. You had a chance, obviously, to make a decision at quarterback this offseason. Whether you ever really considered, you know, Lamar Jackson as a serious entity. You know, the fact is, by sticking with Desmond Ritter uh, over anybody you could have gotten in free agency or in the draft, that looked to me a little bit of a vote of confidence in that. Did you ever think seriously about either Lamar Jackson or someone in this draft? I think you, anytime you, you know, every day you work in the NFL, it's your job to know what's going on in the league and yeah. you evaluate and you, and you game plan, and that's just the way it goes. Otherwise, you're not doing your job. And there's a lot of good players. And the, and the reason, it, it, you know, I mean, look at, you know, the Jets. I mean, they, you know, Aaron Rodgers signs a huge contract, and then they, you know, they, they acquired him in a trade. This isn't 30 years ago. You know, I think what you, what you realize is people are way more willing to do deals. So every offseason, you know, there's a, there's a ton of movement now with great players. And that's just one example. I mean, that's, you know, that's a guy who was a two-time MVP recently. You know, it's – so you see it happen all over. So I think, you know, obviously the guys that get drafted early in the draft, there's there's a lot of hype. There's a lot of, you know, when the guys are up there and you look every year after year in the class, that's one way to acquire them. But there's a lot of ways to acquire a quarterback if you want to go get one now. I think you, you look at every avenue, what's best for this team, how do they fit, is this the guy we want to, to, to lead this team. And there is a lot of confidence in Desmond. I want to ask you just one thing about your defense that occurred to me watching what you did this offseason in going out and getting uh, David Onyemata in free agency from the Saints, getting Calais Campbell, uh, who's a well-traveled guy. But Calais Campbell is one of my favorite players in the league. He, he just He's such a good human being, and he seems ageless. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play two or three more years. But – you really got a got more physical on your defensive front. Of course, you have Grady Jarrett, uh, you know, who's a franchise tackle. Tell me what you wanted to do with your defensive front and how those guys have fit in. You just use the right word about fit and chemistry, and you know, we're we're going to play multiple guys along that front, and we can deploy them a lot of different ways. You know, even you know, Kate Nellis is a guy that can rush the passer, but. Play stack linebacker as well. Uh, we have Arnold Evacati, who we we drafted. That we feel will come along in year two. That's another edge edge kind of guy that can do a couple different jobs. You know, Bud Dupree's here now. We brought back Lorenzo Carter. You got Calais who can play on the edge. You, you know, there's a lot of different mix mix and matching you can do. Grady, he's been a terrific player for for this franchise, and and, and I one of the my favorite guys I've ever coached because he's so consistent. And then once, you know, they, there was a lot of, you know, good older players, and they, they got it. This has become Grady's team, and, and he's got one of the, some of the best leadership traits I've ever seen. And then David, adding David, and uh, David and him are, like, attached at the hip. And, we, you know, TQ Graham is another guy who was coming on last year. It was his second year going to his third-year player. We feel like we've got depth, and we've got a lot of size, and we can mix and match uh, depending on the game plan because you're going to need all those guys as the season goes on. And then even on the back end, adding Jesse Bates, you know, with Richie Grant, Jalen Hawkins back there, and then on the outside with, with A.J. Terrell and, and Jeff Akuda, who I think has had a pretty solid camp so far. Jeff Akuda, interesting. How's yeah. he done? What's what's he look like to you? 
Well, I mean, Jeff and AJ came out the same year. Um, you know, obviously his career didn't start the way he wanted in Detroit with some injuries. Obviously there was a whole wholesale change there. And, um, you know, hopefully this new scenery, you know, he's a very talented player and a, and a very smart guy too. And we feel like, you know, we're trying to, to make sure he's in the right, right environment and, uh, you know, where he can play to his strengths on the outside. And then, you know, what we thought, you know, as we transition in the, in the slot corner, in the nickel corner position, we've got a, a hell of a competition going on there. Mike Hughes, who we signed, and uh, Jerry Gray had in Minnesota at one point in his career. Um, D. Offer, who played some for us last year, and then Clark Phillips. So we've got a lot of great competition going on. We feel like we've got pretty good depth. I'll end with this. You being slept on a little bit, the Atlanta Falcons? I don't know. You know, I don't pay attention to that. It's in, you've covered this league a long time. And every year there are different stories or teams that people, you know, give you the, the offseason Super Bowl award to and you don't hear from them by November. There's other teams that nobody's expecting anything from and they're in at the end. That's what makes this league so fascinating. Uh, it's, it's the best reality show going. It's also the most competitive league in professional sports because year after year there's so many thing, different things that nobody expects to happen, happen. And... Um, I think that's why you, you, there's so much optimism around the, the NFL. When you go travel, you know, it's, it's real. I mean, I would argue, you know, every year, you know, between 30 teams, they feel like they got a shot. Now, whether they really do or not, who knows? You look back. But the way this thing's set up, it's so transactional in a fast-paced way. And week after week, it's, it's highly competitive. So we feel like we got a great shot, but we got to go out there and earn it. You make a great point because – this is one of the reasons why training camp is my favorite time of year because everywhere I go, everybody thinks maybe not, hey, this is our year, but, hey, we're going to be good. Right. You know, e everybody thinks sure. that. Why would you be in the business if you didn't think that? No doubt. You know, yeah. Arthur Smith, listen, thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you, Peter. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.